welcome to the July Smyrna Town Council meeting. I will call this meeting to order, and tonight our prayer is going to be done by Chaplain Jimmy Carver, and our pledge is going to be done by Chief Bill Cupperson. If you'll all stand with us, please. Let us bow. Almighty God, our Father, we come before you, and we are indeed grateful for the beauty of the day. And we pray your blessings to be upon all who play a part in this meeting tonight. We pray for our town. We pray for all of our employees, but especially those who serve us so uh, need, needfully when we are facing difficulty. We pray your blessings to be upon our police officers, our firemen and fire ladies, our EMTs, all of those that we know at a moment's notice come to help us but face very dangerous circumstances at times. We pray for our council and we pray for this meeting tonight that all parties that come before this council might do so uh, civilly and with kindness, knowing that uh, business interests have to be done, but we can do it in a way that we maintain our level of being good neighbors and good citizens. We pray for wisdom on behalf of all of the parties who are here tonight. We pray for our nation. We pray for all of our leaders, not just those here tonight, but from the White House all the way down to this house. And we pray your blessings be with all of them that they might look to you for wisdom and for guidance. Father, we have a very special prayer tonight for the Bobby Wells family who uh, passed recently, and we know that he uh, had a, a tremendous amount of influence on many of the young people of this community in the past, and we pray your blessings to be upon his family, and we thank you for your wisdom, for your guidance, and most of all, for your love, and we ask it in the name of your Son. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Chaplain. Thank you, Chief. Um, Amber, if you'll do roll call. Here. We'll now move on to item three, which is approval or corrections of the minutes for the June 6, 2023 regular meeting and the June 22, 2023 work session and the special called meetings of the town council. Council, any additions or corrections that we need to make to this? Seeing none, do we have a motion? Move to approve the minutes. Motion to approve. Do we have a second? Second. Motion is second. All in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion passes. Item four, uh, correspondence and communications. Anything tonight, Todd? No, ma'am. What about awards and recognition? No, ma'am. Okay. Then we'll move on to our consent agenda. And the consent agenda are items um, that are determined by the town manager to be routine matters and not necessarily needing individual discussion. But um, a council member can choose to pull off any consent agenda item to vote on individually. But I always like to read the consent agenda so you all know exactly what we're voting on. So our first item is approval of the terms of and authorization for the mayor to execute an interlocal agreement with Rutherford County relative to the ambulance service. Item B is approval of the terms of and authorization for the mayor to execute an agreement with TDOT for annual maintenance of state routes and town limits. Item C is approval of the terms of and authorization for the mayor to execute an agreement with HDR Engineering Incorporated to prepare construction drawings to include traffic calming elements along Front Street from College Street to Division Street. Item D is approval of the terms of and authorization for the mayor to execute an agreement with Wayne's Pest Control to provide pest control services for town facilities. Item E is approval of the terms of and authorization for the mayor to execute an agreement with the Robbins and Morton Group for the construction of Fire Hall 4. Item F is approval of the terms of and authorization for the mayor to execute an agreement with Viola WTS Analytical Instruments Incorporated for a total organic carbon 
TOC analyzer for the water treatment plant. Item G is approval of the terms of and authorization for the mayor to execute a proposal for professional services from SEC Incorporated for the upgrade of the Mason Tucker pump station. Item H is approval of the terms of and authorization for the mayor to execute an extension agreement with Dan Weaver Services relative to the water leak detection services. Item I is approval of the terms of and authorization for the mayor to execute contracts with Boozer and Company, Randy Button and Associates, and Brenda Walsh for the appraisals and easement negotiations for the sewer rehab line A project. And the last one is item J, approval of the terms of and authorization for the mayor to execute an extension agreement with Anderson Yards relative to the annual mowing for the codes department. Council, is there an item you would like to pull off and discuss individually? Yes, ma'am. Okay. A couple. Okay. I have some questions about. Okay. So um, which one? C. Okay. E. Okay. G and I. Okay. So other than C, E, G, and I, do I have a motion to approve the consent agenda? Motion to approve. Motion. Do we have a second? Second. Motion and a second. Any discussion? All in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion passes. We'll now go back under the consent agenda and pick up item C, which is approval of the terms of and authorization for the mayor to execute an agreement with HDR Engineering to prepare construction drawings to include traffic calming elements along Front Street from College Street to Division Street. Okay. Just so I know we talked about this at the workshop, but I had some questions after looking over the contract. So some of the um, some of the length is our, has already been surveyed. Part, a portion of this has already been surveyed. How long ago was that surveyed, and how much will they have to? How much time in expense will it be to update what they've already done? Uh, that was done. Uh, part of that was with Charles's project on the Washington Street crossing uh, project, and it goes down to on say Wright Street. Mm -hmm. So what they'll do is they'll add the additional survey information while they're out there. While they're out there, they'll Kind of double check to see what the existing survey showed to make sure nothing, or the original survey showed to make sure nothing significantly changed in it. And then they'll just tie in their new survey with their existing survey. So once we get this approved and sent out, uh, I'm not sure exactly what the time frame is on the survey or sometimes they're backed up. I heard they're some of them backed up four to six weeks before they can start to go out there and, and get the survey. Okay. And then there's a list of items that are in this contract for the survey were these things already done on that first 630 feet which list are you talking about um, under number one under survey there's like a through H of items that would be what the survey is going to include so I'm asking for the previous piece that was on the 630 linear feet from Division Street to Wright Street have they already done this for that portion already, and so they're just needing to do it for the second half of this. Yes, I, I believe they would have done every one of these items before, uh, just as a typical okay. survey. These are typical survey uh, components, so they would have done all of those things before on the previous okay. survey, and then they'll be doing the same type of things on this part of the survey and adding okay. to it. Okay, and then, um, so the cost for the survey, it's a, it's just a lump sum amount. It's yeah, 88000 so that is just to cover the additional the other 600 linear feet or it's that plus anything they need to update from the first time they did the survey yeah, the 88,000 covers the additional survey and then it also includes all the design work to prepare construction plans so okay. a portion of the 88,000 is like the survey but then they'll be doing like full set of construction plans so that we can take that then go out to bid on okay it. and that was then my next question is who the performance of the work so the they're just preparing all the plans we still have to have this bid to get someone to do the construction on it yes okay 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 so um do i have a motion to approve item c motion to approve a motion do we have a second second motion a second any other discussion all in favor say aye aye any opposed motion passes We'll now move on to item E, which is approval of the terms of and authorization for the mayor to execute an agreement with the Robbins and Morton Group for construction of Fire Hall 4. Okay. My question with, with regard to that is we had three bidders, but they were the only ones who actually submitted all of the proper paperwork, correct? correct. I just want to make sure that that yes. was the situation. 
Okay. All right. And just so you know, they were told multiple times exactly how to present it. Right. We I mean, had how three to, meetings. How to, in multiple meetings, yes, exactly what needed right. to be on the outside of the envelope and all, and they... And this is the Still only company only that actually yes, followed directions. In our pre-meeting, we had <laughs> okay. the uh, TM partners. We went over it, how to fill out the document, how to fill out the envelope numerous times. Okay. And uh, this company is the lowest qualified bidder that we were able to qualify through those bids. Okay. 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 So um, do we have a motion? So moved. Do we have a motion? Do we have a second? Second. Motion is second. Any discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passes. We'll now move on to item G, which is approval of the terms of and authorization for the mayor to execute a proposal for professional services from SEC Incorporated for the upgrade of the Mason Tucker pump station. Okay. Hello. Hello. I, I got a little confused in reading the contract because there's two actual companies. There's the SEC, but then there's SSR. Are they uh, like sister companies or? SSR is a sub for SEC. Okay. It helps them work on the VFDs, the pumps, the SCADA stuff. Okay. Kind of, they work, SEC is the primary and SSR is their sub. Okay. And so the sub is going to be the one actually doing the work, the SSR. Some of it. Not all it's, of it. It's uh, a combination of both. It is. Yes, ma'am. Okay. That's what I was not clear on. Okay. But yes, SEC will be the lead. A design engineer on the project. Okay, and so the costs are based on because their their rates are a little bit different. Yeah, if you look on page six under professional services, yeah, that is their cost, and that includes a uh, construction and post construction phase. So that includes construction inspection, which we have typically seen in the past separated, mm -hmm. but it's included in this contract as okay. well. Okay. And you're comfortable with those costs? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Okay. I'm good then. Okay. Do I have a motion to approve item G? I move we approve item G. I have a motion. Do we have a second? Second. Motion is second. Any other discussion? <coughs> All in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. We'll now move on to item I, which is approval of the terms of and authorization for the mayor to execute, execute contracts with Boozer and Company, Randy Button and Associates, and Randy Walsh for the appraisals and easements negotiations for the sewer rehab line A project. Okay. Okay, it says that this is part of the American Rescue Plan grant. So is the grant covering their cost? Um, so the appraise, the cost for these people, yes. For the actual appraisal, no. So it's it's kind of weird. They'll pay for the appraiser, uh, the review appraiser, and the. I'm familiar with the process, the, but they that's won't okay. pay for the actual cost of the easement. Okay. But this is the art project. It is the grant, uh, thirty percent matching grant, and it complete. We're doing basin A eight and A nine now. They're almost done. This will complete the entire basin A sewer rehab. Okay. And I know that's something that's coming up later, that we have some tracks. Is this, how many tracks are included in this? Somewhere in the neighborhood of 25 to 28. Okay. Most of them, a matter of fact, 90% of them are construction easements. Okay. All right, then I'm good with it. All right. Do I have a motion to approve item I? So moved. Have a motion, do we have a second? Second. Motion and a second, any discussion? All in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion passes. Tonight under old business we have seven public hearings. Our first public hearing is consideration of an ordinance amending Town of Smyrna Municipal Code Title II, Chapters 2, 4, 5, and 7 relative to board and committee terms and term limits. Jeff? Yes, Mayor and Council. Uh, this along with the next two public hearings that we'll be having after this. Uh, the council chose to have some uniformity with our boards and committees with our, our terms and term limits. Uh, this, uh, this particular one uh, before you now for Title II will affect uh, Parks and Recreation Board, uh, Project Assistance, Sister City, Charity Assistance, including uh, the uh, Memorial uh, Fund and the Sister City Fund. Uh, but it will make uh, three-year terms with two term limits for uh, uniform with all these boards. Questions for Jeff about this? Seeing none, we'll go to the public to see if there's anyone here to speak for or against this item. 
Seeing no one, we'll close the public hearing, go to council for a motion. Move to approve. We have a motion. Do we have a second? Second. Motion and a second. Any discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passes. Our second public hearing is a consideration of an ordinance amending Town of Smyrna Municipal Code Title Eight, Chapters 2 and 3, relative to the board and committee terms and term limits. Jeff? Uh, likewise, with Title Eight, uh, dealing with uh, alcoholic beverages, this will affect the beer board as well as the package liquor board uh, for those to be three-year terms with two term limits. Questions for Jeff on this? This also is a public hearing, so we'll go to the public to see if there's anyone here to speak for or against this item. Seeing no one, we'll go to council for a motion. Motion to approve. Have a motion and a second. I'll, I'll second. let you fight that out, yeah, Amber. I'm motion and a second. Um, any discussion? All in favor say aye. aye. Any opposed? Motion passes. Item C is public hearing in consideration of an ordinance amending Town of Smyrna Municipal Code Title 14, Chapter 5, relative to board and committee terms and term limits. Jeff? Yes, and last but not least, uh, Title 14, Chapter 5 is for the Stormwater Advisory Committee. Uh, this would uh, allow for that board to have three-year terms and two term limits. Questions for Jeff on this one? Okay, then we'll go to the public to see if there's anyone here to speak for or against this item. Seeing no one, we'll close the public hearing and go to council for a motion. Move we approve. A motion to approve. Do we have a second? Second. Motion and a second. All, um, any discussion? All in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Item D uh, is also a public hearing. It's a consideration of an ordinance amending the town's municipal code, Title 12, Building and Utility Codes, Chapter 6, Residential Codes, Sections 12-602, 603, and 604. Jeff, are you doing this one? Yes. Um, Jason King, uh, assistant, he met with Jeremy, our new uh, public building official, and uh, when they were reviewing, there were some items in there. It's not really going to make any uh, substantive changes, but just some of the references in the code under this section uh, so that it further clarifies what the building uh, codes will be enforcing. So you'll see the update to the table there and just further defines uh, some of these uh, insulation and fenestration. Showing what? <laughs> Fenestrations. Oh, okay. That was the word. That was the word of the night? Yes. Yeah. Got it. Glass, How you spell glass like. How you spell it? Uh-huh. Fenestrations. Yeah. Can I use it in a sentence? Please. <laughs> <laughs> um, any questions for Jeff? on the word or on his comments. <laughs> Seeing none, then we'll go to the public to see if anyone's here to speak for or against the item, not the use of the word. Seeing no one, we'll close the public hearing and go to council for a motion. Move to approve. For a motion, do we have a second? Second. Motion and a second. Any discussion? All in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion passes. We'll move on to item E, which is also a public hearing tonight, a consideration of a resolution relative to a plan of services for property located on tax map 50, parcel 33.02, and part of parcels 33.00 and 72.00. Kevin? Yes, Mayor and Council, this is a plan of services which uh, details the services the town will be providing uh, upon effective date of the annexation. This is the next item on your agenda, the annexation zoning request. Uh, the town will be providing all services to these properties except for water, which will be provided by Consolidated Utility District. Uh, the Planning Commission did review this plan of services and did recommend approval, and staff would also recommend approval. Questions for Kevin on this? I think we had quite a bit of discussion on this as well as our um, additional meeting that we had with uh, planning commission so um, anything anybody wants to add from those meetings okay um, seeing nothing then I will go to the public to see if there's anyone here to speak for or against this item seeing no one I'll go to council for a motion 
I'll move we approve this plan of services. I have a motion to approve the plan of services. Do I have a second? Second. Motion and a second. Kevin, let me ask you kind of more of a procedural question. If we wanted to add into this about looking at the inner the uh, intersection uh, that we've been talking about, is this where we need to do that? Um, I think that's probably more it would be more looked at with the annexation and the PRD zoning. I think um, I think because this is just our if we're going to start maintaining the streets upon annexation and that sort of thing. I think that would really be more appropriate with the with zoning, the next one. With the okay. Next one. Okay. Okay. So we have a motion and a second on the floor. Any? Wait. Did I do the? Yes. Yes. The okay. Motion to second. Any other discussion? All in favor, say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion passes. Our next item is a public hearing that goes along with this, which is consideration of an ordinance relative to the annexation and PRD and R1 zoning of property located on tax map 50, parcels 33.02 and part of parcels 33.00 and 72.00, requested by Oliver Constable on behalf of two different property owners containing 47.83 acres. The property is located on Lee Road and Rocky Fork Road. Uh, Kevin? Yeah, these uh, properties uh, are located on Rocky Fork Road and Lee Road. Uh, southwest of the intersection of those two streets. The uh, land use plan would support medium density single family residential in this area. Surrounding zoning is a mix is RM in Rutherford County. The town would be, as we just looked, talked about, would be providing all services except for water, which would be provided by CUD. Uh, they have indicated there is adequate domestic flow in this area, but not fire flow. Uh, staff did receive a facilities improvement determination letter from CUD, which does detail three options for the developer to consider to correct the fire flow deficiency. Um, there are two existing houses, uh, which would be annexed with this request, and both would be removed as a part of the development. Uh, as a part of this request, staff did recommend annexation of approximately 4,542 linear feet of the existing right-of-way of Lee Road and approximately 1,405 linear feet of the existing right-of-way of Jordan Lane. Uh, this proposed PRD is for 88 lots on the 41.66 acres with the remaining 6.17 acres to be zoned R1. The houses would be a minimum of 1,800 square feet of living area with a two-car garage. Materials would be a mix of brick, stone, and cement board siding. Uh, all requirements of the town with regards to open space parking and setbacks would be met. A portion of this property is located within the 100-year floodplain, so development would require compliance with Article 9 of the Zoning Ordinance. Uh, one access point is shown to Lee Road with a stub street to the west, and then access to either uh, the existing Rocky Fork Road or the new Rocky Fork Road McEwen Drive connector route would also be uh, a part of this development. Uh, the proposed, that proposed route before that new road does cross this site would be accommodated as a part of this project. Uh, in addition, the existing 20-foot prescriptive right-of-way for Jordan Lane is within this project's limits, and the developer has proposed that that road would be abandoned and eliminated with the development, except for an access easement uh, granted to the two houses that are on adjacent tracks to utilize it for access. Uh, the Planning Commission did recommend approval of this uh, with uh, several conditions. Uh, the original recommendation of the Planning Commission was to require a traffic study. Uh, the council on first reading changed that to, uh, in, in lieu of that, to add a, a, turn, a left turn lane in lieu of that study. Um, number two, that the required minimum fire flow is 1,000 uh, GPM at 20 PSI. As CUD has indicated that this fire flow cannot be met at this time, no plats could be approved until a timeline for those improvements to correct this issue has been established. Uh, three, development of this property will require a hydrologic and hydraulic study to be submitted for review due to the proposed floodplain alterations, which would ultimately lead to a letter of map revision application to FEMA, and that a landscape buffer is required between lots 62 through 65 and the proposed Rocky Fork uh, Road McEwen Drive connector. Staff would recommend approval. Questions for Kevin on this? Seeing none, then we will go to the public to see if there's anyone here to speak for or against this item. If you'll come forward, if you'll state your name and your address for the record, please. Yes, Ms. Mayor. <clears throat> Good evening. My name is Richard Benedict. 
Um, I live at 5069 Lee Road, which is the property directly south of Lee and north of the development there. Um, I submitted some uh, comments in writing for last month. I want to thank you, Ms. Mayor, and for some other council members that reached out to me with some questions. Um, the, I, I guess I'll be very brief, but my request is uh, that the council consider in the, in the permitting process uh, to require the builder to put an eight-foot privacy fence along my border. Um, I have, there's about 400 feet on my east border and the south border of my property that ha will have about 16 houses there. Currently, there's a used to be a horse pasture and, a, and then a, a hay field there, and so um, having 16 families immediately looking into my property, it's, a, it's an old farm. We have tools, equipment, things that could, could cause danger and harm to children. Um, there could be youthful vandalism and mischief as, as people move into that area and move back and forth. So um, my request is simple, um, that you require that as part of the permit, and I'm certainly understanding if the builder, um, I guess let me back up. For myself and my family to put 400 feet of a fence back there is pretty cost prohibitive. Uh, however, a new housing development divided among 16 or 18 houses seems like a mayor, maybe a more fair uh, way to put up a fence there. So my request is um, that you require that as part of the permit process. I'm not sure what that looks like. And also, there's some fairly decent sized trees along the border that do provide some privacy. Uh, some are cedar, some are deciduous. So at least fall in the winter. But if they could leave those trees that are there as well, that would provide sound and, and visual barrier as well. So um, I want to thank you for, for the time tonight and um, appreciate Ms. Amber's help getting the information to you also. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Anyone else here to speak for or against this item? If you could state your name, address, and who you're representing, please. Good evening, Mayor. Rob Mulchin, the SEC, on behalf of Oliver Constable. Um, we are in agreement with all the conditions that have been set forth on the property on this side in regards to those conditions on that side. We did receive Mr. Benedict's letter in regards to his request for the fence and preservation of the trees on that side. Uh, Mr. Constable is willing to preserve the trees, but is not willing to want to do the fence at this time. It would be, an, as Mr. Benedict talked about, it is a considerable expense to put that fence up between our development and his, his property on that side. But we are amicable to making certain that we maintain and preserve the existing tree row that's between our properties on that side to at least in good faith continue to have that preservation of that separational visual separation between our property and his property on that side so thank, thank you. you anyone else here to speak for or against this item seeing no one I will go I'll close the public hearing and go to council for <clears throat> motion or discussion Uh, discussion in, in with Kevin. Kevin, in the past, when we've had requests for uh, you know privacy fences, it's been my experience that the fence itself uh, is subject to deterioration and uh, isn't anything as lasting as just that natural tree line. Is there any other type of landscape buffer that would maybe provide a more permanent screening than? Uh, than just a fence itself. Is, could something be added along that property line? Could certainly add something. Our, our ordinance wouldn't require typically here because it is single family residential, abutting single family yeah, residential yeah. from a zoning standpoint, so we wouldn't necessarily require any type of buffer. Um, the existing resident, or the, I'm sorry, the existing tree line that's there, uh, certainly in, in the past, at times we have. Is when those uh, existing tree lines are maintained, sometimes they will supplement, maybe where there's the gaps or where you have maybe you mentioned some of the, the uh, deciduous trees and where you could add some, some uh, evergreen type uh, trees within maybe or something like that where there's gaps and where they would survive, you know, and that sort of thing uh, might be an option as well. Okay. I just, again, I know in the past that we've had troubles with maintenance of fences and, and eventually they deteriorate to the point they fall down and we lose what we're, we're trying to achieve here. And, and my preference is always if we can do something that preserves the natural tree line and if we could supplement it, then I, I think that's a more lasting approach. I would like to see us do something. So, Kevin, what's your recommendation? If we want to do something, 
If you wanted, I mean, I think um, probably supplementing the, the, the landscaping area is, is the simplest and easiest thing to do. I mean, an eight-foot fence is even typically more maintenance than, than like a five or a six-foot fence would be. Um, it's over there quick. So that would be would be our, my recommendation. Have we done this anywhere in this area before? Are we are we inconsistent here or no? I'm trying to think. I don't know. In I don't know. I can't think of in, in this area where we had anything like that. Typically, we've had it's, again it's single family abutting single families. It's, it's so, with a natural tree line, uh, according to the homeowner, there's a natural tree line that runs back through there that he'd like to see maintained. Um, can it be gap filled in some way with uh, a type B, A, B, C type buffer? Sure, certainly, that's something you could look at. Yeah, a type A would be. Probably what would be the the typical something like this in this area. That was what that's kind of a, what we used to was all we used to require, and that's kind of the minimum. I think filling in the gaps, but if there are gaps, uh, with those type of uh, evergreen trees or shrubs, whatever's appropriate. Uh, I see a lot of buildings on his property. Is there just one home? Blue, yeah, Blue's just one home. Just I think there's home. some other accessory buildings. Yeah. For those that may not know what type A buffering is, can you? It's basically an evergreen tree every 20 feet, and then you fill in with shrubs in between, at least three between each pair of trees, basically. Okay. So. Council, any other questions or comments on this? I know that we did. Um, ask them to do the uh, turning lane, but I would also like to see a traffic study done to look at the intersection that is, how far would you say it is, Kevin? I think I measured it's about 2,000 feet to the east there, the, the okay. Lee Road and Rocky Fork Road intersection. I would also like to see that in and I, I, I certainly don't mind that either, but my question would be here, we know Lee Road is expanding and growing a lot. Uh, that's why we're taking a look at turn lanes and so forth. But say, for example, a traffic study uh, revealed that that intersection needs some work, and we know more growth is coming out that way. How would you suggest it's shared amongst development? Well, that's we would have to figure that out, quite frankly, because we haven't done that before. Uh, because if it's if it already needs improvements already that the development's not necessarily causing the problem if the problem's already there and then you have the additional development that's going to make the problem increased um, you know how do you divide it up uh, I guess my question are we asking 180 lot developer to potentially fix that whole intersection I don't, I don't, on his own and yeah, without I don't, I don't think we would be looking at that okay. um, I think we know of other developments that are coming in that area, right. certainly. And that's why I'm asking the question, is there a method or a mechanism to escrow or something to where everybody's pitching in to make these improvements? Yeah, yeah. yeah. the other piece think, of this is this yeah. one can't even move forward until CUD gets their fire flow up. So it's possible that another development... They could, could sprinkle it. Away. Well, I'm just saying that the, yeah. another development could come along before this one. That's right. So if it's on this guy, but the other development comes first, then yeah. now you're kind that's of right. out of I, I think you would have to do some sort of design to what you're going to do, establish a cost, um, and then try to figure out a, a per lot cost or something like that based on that, you know, uh, or linear, you know, the amount of development potential on a parcel or something like that, and kind of when that parcel gets developed, there's a some sort of assessment potential. I don't know if that's even something we can do. That's just, I'm just I'm thinking just off the top of my head. I'm what the method or mechanism would right. be. That's all. We've identified this road as a road that needs improvement in our major thoroughfare plan or, or, or actually probably even outside of that. Was that not included when we were looking at Spring Hill and a couple of the other roads that we identified that? Yeah, it's a, of course our focus right now is on Rocky Fork Conville Road. But right. It, but down, that's kind of, is certainly something that's to be done in the future, yeah. I guess from my perspective, I'm trying to think longer term. I mean, are we at a point where 
uh, right now we haven't engineered this at all, or have we? We have not. We know that, you know, if you, I mean, just kind of looking at this small snippet of land out here, we know there are other tracks are around that and whatnot. Are we at a point where we need to you know, take the lead and engineer this from, you know, the start and until it ties into Rocky Fork Road and, and um, then figure out a plan as far as how the participation is, you know, is it a combination uh, or is it fully funded by the impact fees that will be collected here or is it a combination of impact fees plus some type of assessment? Um, because I, I think there's, again, um, there's a lot of land here and we know it's going to develop and, it, and it's continued to develop. If we, I guess this is my concern, if, if we're doing a traffic study and they're looking at it and they go, okay, the engineer goes, well, we've got uh, ingress and ing uh, egress off of Lee and we have it off of Rocky Fork, they may come back and, and, and say, this is sufficient for this, this particular, you know, 88 homes here. But we know that when we're looking at everything else that we're talking about taking in, it's really not, and you know, we, we do have some time in that. You know, we were you know, the CUD issues and and whatnot. So, is this maybe more appropriate for us to look at as a town and, and engineer this road the way we we anticipate it being developed out? I mean, certainly that's something. It's it's one way to approach it. Certainly, I think you know I don't think there's anything in the current budget to do that. But it's obviously that's something you all could could amend the budget and add add the project to the list. But now, um, one of the questions that came up was impact fees itself, and actually we're looking at studying those right now to increase those. And that said, um, and to Tim's point, is there? It's kind of what impact fees do, right? They help us improve roadways and sidewalks and parks and that kind of thing. So. Uh, with that increase coming at some point, it appears right now we're at 100 percent. Am I right? We're we're collecting 100 percent of what we can. Correct. Right. So, um, do we have do we have some skin we've got to put in the game from impact fees as well? So, uh, if we're asking for a traffic study and it doesn't give us the results that we may hope it gives us, where are we then with that? improvement of that intersection some some distance away and is that something impact fees can be applied to certainly that's something impact fees can be applied to um, so that, that certainly would be of course anything you know any participation that's something we could you, if you have the assessment and then you have impact fees I mean sometimes if you, you also have to deal with potentially a, if, if a developer makes an improvement you have to there's an offset provision. <laughs> so there you go. That's where I was kind of yeah, going with it. So, it, it is uh, it in lieu of? So it certainly speak. could be in lieu yeah. of. But I think fees. we all yeah. know the impact fees in no way covers what the true impact is of what it's costing us for roads and parks and and services. What the actual cost is? There, yeah. There's no way it covers. No, it. I, no, I don't. I don't disagree with that. If if we can get people to partner with us to do that, there's nothing wrong totally with that agree. at all, right? I just think we need a number to get there. Well, that's that's Agreed. where I'm going. It's like, uh, is there an escrow fund of some of some kind that can be built up to use those funds beyond the impact fees? <clears throat> yeah. Or do we go down the path like Tim mentioned, where the town takes this on, we build it, and then there's a special assessment for a particular area for some period of time or something like that? Mm -hmm. So we need to look at doing something like that because we are we're having to be too reactionary and we need to try to get ahead of this. So I think we need to at least look at doing something like that. Yeah, and I don't I don't think it's reasonable to have, you know, whoever happens to be the first development in the area foot the bill, right? Or the last. Or the last, right? So yeah, Kevin, knowing like, kind of where <laughs> council is wanting to get to, what is your recommendation for where we're at at this point? I think asking for a traffic study to at least see what this development's impact is on the intersection, I think that's appropriate. And I think beyond that, I think 
we have to for tonight I think that's all you can really look at and do I think moving forward we have to have a little more discussion of how we want to approach it do you want to the town to take on the project and, and have an additional assessment if we can do that or that's probably where you're headed because having 14 different developers all get together and do a project is probably not a feasible thing I mean I think you have to have the town's lead on something like that and so I think at this point I think really just re asking for that traffic study to take a look at what this development's impact is going to be on that intersection and, and, then, and then move forward and then you know that much so if there is an impact you kind of know what that impact is from this development and then we have to this other issue I think is a bigger issue we have to make some so determinations on how does that position us specifically to this development we move forward with this development the approval tonight where they can move forward with doing the traffic study and then we come down the road six months later and we have this assessment that we need to somehow now apply. How does that apply to something we've already approved? I think you have to probably include that in somehow in the motion in the condition of the approval if that's what you want to do with the, adding the traffic study back in and then make that a condition of the approval. And traffic studies are they're third party. I mean, mm -hmm. they're not hired by anybody. So right, yeah, that'd they, be a third they should party. give you a clear look. Right. Uh, yeah. We'll, of course, we'll, whatever gets submitted, we evaluate it and, and, and look at it. And, and uh, plus, school's go about to start back. So, traffic study wise, it's probably you're, you're about a month and a half or so from being right. able to count traffic. It's, right. It probably makes good yes. sense to that's my understanding to wait for that traffic study to be done with schools not yet in session. Right. Yeah, we have to yeah. wait a good at least six weeks. Yeah. From now. <clears throat> Jeff, legal, legally, are we okay doing it that way? I'm trying to understand what, what you're doing. I, I if, guess what if I'm If we're hearing... wanting them, if we're wanting this development to pay a portion of the upgrade of that intersection, once we figure out what that portion is going to be, can we put that in the form of the motion now if the traffic study shows improvement <clears throat> needs to be done to that? Typically... Obviously, I know this may not be typically, but typically what we do is follow the recommendations of the traffic study. Um, and so we don't know what that's going to be. And that's always been a little of the problem the council has is because it's something that's unforeseen. We were going by the experts that tell us that's how we get those turning lanes or other things like that. Um, and so I know that we're, we want them to look at this, but I think that the way that you need to word it is follow the recommendations of the traffic study. But what happens if you're not wanting them to have to do the entirety of the project, only their percentage of the portion that would be theirs based on all the other properties around it? Well, the traffic study should lay that out as far as not the money amount, but it's going to say what their impact is, which is all they're going to be responsible for. And so that would then be incumbent upon us to have a formula, a mathematical formula that identifies what that share is going to be. But I think uh, more importantly that you're just wanting there, you know, we're asking for a traffic study and we're asking you to, to uh, implement those improvements, either by uh, funding or by actually making the improvements. And so granted, if it's a full intersection, they really can't make those full improvements, right? So I think I would put in your emotion that either by funding or by making the improvements themselves. This is all predicated upon the traffic study, though, saying... Yeah, if it does, it may not this say... intersection is needed. If it comes back and says, and they're, they're looking within the scope of this, that it's not needed... That's right. Then where are you? Then they wouldn't be. Right, because it may right. say... Then they, they don't have to do anything at right. that point. Right, right. But if it says it for that, it's going to say it for all the other ones, too, and then it's going to be on us. Don't you agree? Not necessarily, the, no. Yeah. I don't know if a traffic so study is going... So you don't think to... if, if this one develops, it, the, the traffic study would probably say the same thing? It surprised me that it didn't get, it didn't get flagged for Greystone. Yeah. I mean, that's the big one. That's, we're, that's the white elephant in the room right there. It's, uh, that is a huge development, and that traffic study apparently didn't flag that intersection. Right. But if you add to it, does that not bring on more, the, 
the, uh, the possibility of the... Well, the, that's why the studies are done. Yeah. I mean, that's their third-party studies. And so from a planning perspective, that's where we always go. What does the traffic study... So initially, we didn't think or know that the traffic study at that time would even consider putting a turn lane in. And that's why we said in lieu of, we'd still like to get that turn lane. It's kind of grown legs since then a little bit, and we've just got to figure out when do we mandate traffic studies, or are we, or can we? For that matter from the other side of the aisle, the legal side of the aisle. I mean, they're, they're going to do a traffic study. Can we change that traffic study, no matter what that traffic study says? No, I think if we're going to say follow the recommendation of the traffic study, then you're, you're kind of tied That's to That's what we've always done. Mm -hmm. But I, this is a, little, this, this is a right. little bit out of the box for us, I think. That's what we're trying mm -hmm. to... What if we follow what Jeff is saying in regards to asking for the traffic study, putting in there that we follow what the traffic study shows, and in the meantime, we have staff bring back to us for discussion at the next workshop, starting to look at whether it's the town taking it on and us figuring out a percentage. We just need the formula yeah. to move forward. Because, I mean, not only for us to know, but anybody that wants to develop in this area needs to know that too. Well, what's for that is, is, is the citizens that live out there. Absolutely. So safety. So Absolutely. I, I think that's probably the safest way to do it. And uh, that's kind of where I think planning is looking at doing it. So. Do I have a motion? It's a hot mess. <laughs> <laughs> Anybody want to take a stab at it? Well, let me let me ask the question again because I think according to what you just stated, we'd like to go ahead and, and move forward with what the traffic study gives us here. Is that right? Mm -hmm. Are you approving it based on traffic study results? In it, but keeping the turn lane in. Keep, keep keeping the turn, the turn lane, lane yes. in. And keeping then all have, recommendations that were already there. Okay, and then have staff bring us some solutions uh, going forward with how we can remedy this into our desires for traffic studies to look at. That's not part of this motion. That part. I didn't make a motion. No, I'm just saying, but that's not wouldn't be part of right. this motion. Right. But and not just with this project, but moving forward yeah. with how we look across the town. Yeah, and to Kevin's suggestion there a minute ago, I think that was his suggestion. Uh, we typically follow the traffic studies. That's what we do. That's what Jeff said. So that's kind of where I think I'd feel better going to follow the traffic study guidelines and then have them bring us some formulas or solutions to look at as we grow out that way. Is that what I heard you say? But, okay. I mean, not only just out there, but as anywhere. we look anywhere, anywhere. Yeah, yeah. but I also want to include the buffer yeah. as well. I think I got it. You got it? Mm -hmm. Okay, go for All it. All right, I'm going to let you make that motion. Um, motion for approval, uh, including all of staff requirements, the, including the left turn lane traffic study with the results being implemented either by funding or by um, construction, uh, as well as a landscape buffer fill uh, along the, um, I guess, North. Benedict property lines. <coughs> Would that be an A-style buffer? I, so one of the items in the recommendation was just a landscape buffer for slot 62 to 65 on the other side. So I went with the same vein because it doesn't specify which landscape buffer. So whatever buffer that was. What, right, whatever, whatever they're requiring on the other side, they might as well do on this side. Mm -hmm. Did y'all get that motion? I did. Okay. Okay, we have a motion. Do we have a second? Second. Motion to second. Dis Okay, I have to ask. Um, Mr. Benedict would like to say something else, but I have to suspend the rules to do that. Are you all? I'm okay with that. Okay. Okay. Thank you, Ms. Mayor. Thank you guys for your, your conversation. <clears throat> I guess I'd be delighted with a six foot fence instead of an eight foot fence. Um, also, there's a PVC fence that has a longer maintenance period of that. Um, and also, I think in. Um, so I did some quick math. The 400 feet that's on my property line, if you divide that by 16 houses, those homeowners would be paying for 25 feet of fence. I'd be willing to pay for that. 
or even 50 feet of the fence, if that would be a, a consideration that you guys would, would make. The other piece, I think the Montgomery Way, some of those developments to the east, which are kind of co coming this way, I think they all have wooden privacy fences. I don't know if that's a requirement of the development or the permit, uh, but I believe there are quite a few houses that have those. And finally, this, this is more about, I would trade off the landscaping for fencing very quickly. This is not about visual as much as it is folks trespassing in there. It's a rickety fence that's been there for years. Um, and I'm afraid someone's going get, to get hurt. Obviously, there's theft involved there, but that would be um, just a consideration or some thoughts for you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. We have a motion and a second on the floor. Anybody want to have discussion about Mr. Benedict's request? I think the only comment I have is um, I, I'm not aware of any development in town where we've required a privacy fence, residential to residential. They are some that have it. Um, it's there because the developer elected to put that up or, um, the, homeowners. or the homeowners, right? Um, we've already heard from the developer that they're not they don't want to they don't want to pay for that um, We're also adding some additional um, Requirements to the, to the developer for the road study the traffic in, in the traffic impact as well as an additional buffer so um, I, Although the vinyl fence would be nice but that's probably more expensive than even the wooden fence so um, I, I don't think we would be consistent by requiring it in this case but other discussion will of the council okay we have a motion and a second on the floor anything else steve do you want to restate your motion no <laughs> <laughs> okay we jeff can you read what i said <laughs> okay we have a motion and a yes, second um all in favor say aye. aye any opposed motion passes We'll now move on to item G, which is consideration of a resolution and memorandum of ordinance 23-22 relative to the annexation and PRD and R1 zoning of property located on tax map 50, parcels 33.02 and part of parcels 33.00 and 72.00. Do I have a motion? So moved. So moved. Motion. Do we have a second? Second. Second. All in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion passes. We're now to our last public hearing of the night, which is a consideration of an ordinance relative to the rezoning of property located on tax map 28, part of parcels 113.00 and 113.01 to go from R3 to PRD. It's requested by Josh Hooper on behalf of Beacon Properties. The properties requested to be rezoned contain approximately 5.62 acres and are located south of Rock Springs Road. Kevin? Yes, Mayor and Council, these are uh, properties that are south of Rock Springs Road and near the intersection with Medical Park. The land use plan would support medium density, single family residential in this area. Surrounding zoning is a mix of C4, R1, and R3. But this proposed PRD is for 54 apartments on 5.62 acres for a density of 9.61 units per acre. Uh, the apartments will be restricted to age 62 plus. Uh, the proposed building uh, would be three stories in height, up to 69,000 square feet in size. Mater the materials would be a mix of brick, stone, and cement siding, and all requirements of the town with regard to open space and parking would be met. A portion of this property does lie within the 100-year floodplain and floodway, so development would require compliance with Article 9 of the Zoning Ordinance. Uh, this development would access Rock Springs Road at a new location with a public street. And it would also connect to an existing street at Addison Drive. Uh, the portions of both parcels not proposed to be rezoned would, re would remain R1 and R3 and could be developed in that manner in the future. Uh, the Planning Commission did review this request, did recommend approval with a couple of conditions. One, that the fire department access drives and turnarounds are required to meet the requirements of the fire code. There were some concerns from the fire department as to how they're currently drawn, so we'd look at that if this is approved at site plan more closely. Uh, and then number two, uh, no construction traffic would be allowed on Spring Hill Drive and Johnstown Drive for this project. Uh, the bridge would say we'll have, would have to build a bridge across the creek uh, to access Rock Springs Road. That bridge and road would have to be constructed before construction can begin on the building. Uh, and the connection to Addison Drive would be required to be kept closed until completion of the construction of the apartment building just to keep the construction traffic from coming through the existing residential neighborhood that's ab abutting this property. Uh, and with that, uh, staff would also recommend approval. Questions for Kevin? Kevin, we saw in their plan book the 
they brought before, architectural review look. Uh, I just want to make real sure, I've, I've told them this, I just want to make real sure what they're showing us is the product we'll receive. Do we do that at, at, uh, at the future site plan or how do we do We that? would review it, more, the specific plans would come in with the site plan certainly, okay. but uh, this, this pattern book would cover. Um, they're getting a lot of good accolades for their product uh, in the region here uh, for senior living recognized pretty highly for bringing a top product for a need in Smyrna and uh, I've had a little dialogue with them so I think we've all talked about the need for senior housing here and what it looks like I don't think our Smyrna Housing Authority at this point can even keep up there's waiting lists for those that are three and four years long if you can even get on them so this is so close to the hospital and a good-looking product as it's been presented so I think that's why uh, I think most of the council, maybe not, maybe not all, I don't recall the vote, but um, sees favor of why we want to do something for our seniors here, for affordable living. Many of our seniors, mm -hmm. many of our young people, many people in general just can't afford housing anymore. It's gotten ridiculous. So this is a way for our senior members to find some affordability here, and I think that's, that's close to my heart, and that's something I'd like to see move forward. I think it's a good product in between the two, in between what the housing authority is doing and then um, the other senior housing that we're having come in. And I definitely see a need, but I also agree. I want it to be a good looking product. Absolutely. I think we've pounded that home to them pretty well. Agreed. I think they understand that. So. I think they want to be good partners. Yeah. Hey, Kevin, uh, I've not had anybody reach out to me. Have you had anybody reach out to you in the, I, from the neighborhood? Just today, actually this afternoon late, I did receive a call, uh, and I don't know if they were going to try and be here tonight, so they may be here to speak. They didn't give any specific objections or concerns or anything like that. They just reached out and wanted to be sure what time the meeting started, and and also said they may be reaching out via email, uh, and so I don't know if that happened or not. So that is the only point I've heard from. Did you have any discussion about the project itself? Did, we did talk a little bit about the project, yes. Okay. Yeah. Age restricted. Mm -hmm. yeah. Other questions or comments for Kevin? Okay, this is a public hearing, so if there's anyone here to speak for or against this item, if you'll come forward. If you'll state your name and address for the record, and then um, we'd love to hear what you have to say. Okay, my name is my name is Jetta Jernigan. I live at 522 Johnstown Drive in Hunters Point, and I actually live on the corner of Johnstown and Addison Drive. Okay, and my concern is not for the senior depart. You know, I, I I'm a retired nurse. I I see the need for that. But my concern is for the future development of the houses. I was told when I called in that it was approximately 30 feet from my backyard. And at the present time, we have a tree line there. But I was told that that will be gone. <coughs> and I would like to have a reconsideration of something like that. Because I, I chose that house 17 years ago, so I can look out from my deck and just see a, a, a row of trees. And uh, I, I don't want to lose that, if at all possible. Thank you, Ms. Jernigan. Thank you. Anyone else to speak for or against this item? Good State evening, Rob Mulchin, SEC, on behalf of Josh Hooper and Beacon. Um, I think we're in concurrence with all the conditions that's been set forth on the project on that side. Um, Mr. Atkins has made some good accolades about the property on that side. I don't think you know Mark and Tim have heard from Josh and his group in regards to what they're bringing to the community on that side. So I don't think the rest of the council has really had that engaged conversation. So I'd like to have Josh come up for just a quick moment to kind of introduce himself, introduce the company, and kind of explain what this product is that they're bringing to the marketplace here in Smyrna. Great. You'll state your name, address, and the company you represent, please. Great. Uh, Josh Hooper. Uh, I live at 1108 Milton Street in Louisville. 
and I'm with Beacon Properties. Uh, so absolutely, I can say a little bit about it. Um, this is uh, senior independent living. Um, we are doing uh, 54 apartments in an elevator building, um, and it is uh, being offered at affordable rents. Uh, what I always like for people to know is that this is independent living. Um, it's not assisted living. It's just not kind of our niche. Our, our niche is truly senior independent living. Um, and it is uh, something where we're targeting folks who have worked hard all their lives and they're, they're paying these rents. They're not, they're not getting assistance on the rents, but we're just trying to keep them at more of an affordable level. Uh, so like we're looking at an average of maybe 900, uh, not maybe, an average of 900 on the one bedrooms and 1,100 on the two bedrooms. So to me that sounds like a real rent, but when you really look at what it com compares to in the market, it's definitely at a discount. Um, we're, uh, you know, as far as the, the product that we're offering, it will feel like a market rate development. It, you know, we have, we're actually providing washers and dryers in every unit. We're uh, pr providing above range microwaves, dishwashers. We're providing a fitness room. Uh, we're actually partnering with Matter Health, which will provide services for the seniors. Um, uh, so if folks want to just need to schedule an appointment, they can just come right downstairs and get their, uh, get their shots or whatever. Um, we are providing some site amenities, including a pergola and a gazebo, um, a deck that would look out onto the, on to kind of down towards the uh, creek. Um, and then raised garden beds is something that we've seen that our seniors really do like, as well as a building where we can keep tools and things for the seniors to use. Um, you know, I even looked at this, and I think this is kind of neat, the percentage of seniors in Smyrna that would be able to afford to live here is much higher than you think. Um, so I think this really is the type of product that would be, if you're a, a teacher who's retired, uh, maybe you even have some assets, maybe you've sold your home, but your, your income is not large, then you would qualify to live here. Um, and so uh, that's something that I think is really neat. And then really also to that piece about the housing, we, what we see is that, and we hear these stories, these are some of the most heartwarming stories we hear where somebody says, I wanted, you know, husband passed away maybe, or wife passed away, looking to, looking to downsize into something smaller, but just can't find anything. And so that's exactly what we're trying to provide here in Smyrna. As far as about Beacon, just very briefly, we're long-term owner operators, so we'd be your neighbors. This has got a 30-year uh, affordability restriction. I think we even bumped it 15 years to 45. Um, and we don't, we don't sell what we, we build. So you, Shannon sitting right here, you'd be seeing him at all the construction meetings. Travis comes down a lot too. Um, and so uh, really all that to say that we're excited about the development and we're happy to answer any questions. And every person living in the unit has to be 62 or older. Yeah, that's right. So with that restriction, um, the, even if you're a, a senior who's 62 and your wife or husband is 59, you would not qualify to live here. Could you talk to us a little bit about the single family component? Uh, and what, how that would compare to the existing neighborhood? Yes. Um, so the uh, property it, along the senior housing on Johnstown is currently zoned R3. The, the landowner that, so we have it, of course, under site control, but the, the landowner that, uh, that technically owns it had planned to develop this and was hoping to increase the density of the single family lots and go with, I think they were, 50 foot wide lots and one of the things that we heard as we talked to both neighbors and the council is that it really makes sense to try to keep those lots at the same width as the existing lots and to provide a, a product of a similar quality we were never thinking and I don't think the current landowner was thinking they would provide a lower quality product but certainly if you start squeezing your lots you may wind up with that even if you didn't intend to so this would allow us to provide a similar uh, quality and it also ensures that there's, you know, you're not getting as many folks backing up to those backyards. Okay. Other questions for Josh? Josh, how, how much of that that backs up to the new R3 there that's being proposed, uh, how much of that is tree lined and how much of that has to be removed? Can you tell? Yeah, so, I, and I was actually curious to know um, the, uh, I, I'm sorry, ma'am, I forget your name, but the, is your house on the west or the east of Addison? Um, my house is like are on the left as or the right as we're looking. If you as you look at the map, 
mine is on the left. Okay, yeah. That, that may have a little bit less of a tree buffer. I'm looking at a satellite image, but I do still think there's a, a fairly substantial uh, tree buffer there. And Rob, I don't, I don't, I'm correct me if I'm wrong, but I don't think we would, had certainly planned to remove that unless. Well, yeah. that's my question. Yeah. I mean, if, if they're along the back of each lot, it's not going to affect the building pad at all. No, I think as we, as based on her, her questions on this, I think from the standpoint of as we get into the design of these lots on that side, we'd be amicable to working to make certain that our grading is not disturb the tree line along those property lines because one, as, as we develop these properties and we go to sell these properties, it'll make even more of a case for us to be able to sell them easier if there is an existing tree line behind there. So it's not only one of benefit for the existing homeowners that back up to today, but it'll be an existing, it'll be a benefit for those buyers who are buying into this, and it would also be much more of an easier selling point for those homes with that tree line behind there. So we would any, definitely would be any vegetation like that yep. that you could leave on site. I think benefits everybody on both sides. No, the new side and the existing side. Yeah. So. so we would be, we would definitely be willing to that would be condition your guys' approval on that side. We would make certain that it's part of our design as we get in the engineering of those lots. So we make certain we do our do our job to make certain to be maintain that tree road. So. Ms. Turning, does that help some? It does. Thank okay. You. Other questions for Rob or Josh? Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Is there anyone else who would like to speak for or against this item? Seeing no one, I'll close the public hearing and go to council for a motion. I'll move we approve. I have a motion to approve. Do we have a second? Second. Motion and a second. Any discussion? Just for clarification. So the single family residences, these lots are already lined the way that they're going to lead them. Is I'm not well, getting I mean, that, that correct. That, that's the, that's the, they would be, uh, remain zoned R3. So, yeah, it would be that's, and they are, it's the same zoning as what's behind on the existing development. Right. So, yes, they would have to be something very similar to that. Okay. They're not being platted right now, but they certainly would be okay. limited because of the 10,000 square foot lot size and the lot width requirements and lot depth requirements that R3 has. Okay. So, they, that is, it would be something very, very similar to what's on there. Yes. Okay. And the property that's on the other side is not buildable. Is that the part that has is part in the floodplain, or yes. am I that, is, that side on the other side of that new roadway? Yes, is partially in the floodplain okay. area, and so it would be more limited. It certainly would have that same single-family zoning, and so you may have some development there, but the lots would be end up being larger, and you would have to do some sort of cut and fill balance in the floodplain to be okay. able to really develop those. Okay, just wanted to clarify that. Yeah, I don't know, Raquel, if you see those lines that go kind of across the road, there's two of them that are crossing where the bridge is. Um, that's actually the floodplain lines. Okay. Then the one is the 100 year, and the other is the <coughs> one's like floodplain and one's floodway, I think. Okay. Yeah. Right here. Okay. Okay. H hence the bridge. Yeah. Other <laughs> questions or comments? So Seeing none, we have a motion and a second. All in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion passes. We'll now move on to new business. Under the Planning Commission report, we have a consideration of an ordinance relative to the rezoning of property located on tax, tax map 33D, group A, parcel 16.00, from R2 to C2, requested by McColl Vaughn. The property requested to be rezoned contains 59 one hundredths of an acre and is located at 12630 Old Nashville Highway. Kevin? Yeah, this is a rezoning request. It's at the on Old Nashville Highway at the intersection with Todd Lane. Uh, the land use plan for this area is the Old Nashville Highway or Old Nashville Corridor character area, uh, which kind of would support a mix of neighborhood retail and services as well as townhomes and other multifamily development. The surrounding zoning is C2, R2, and PRD, which is DeLacy Place, PRD. Um, there is an existing house on this property. It does not meet current setback requirements along Todd Lane and Johnson Street. Um, this is legally non-conforming. The house was there and, and predates uh, town, the town of Smyrna having zoning, so it is certainly a legally non-conforming situation. The applicant has indicated that the house would be removed as part of the development of the property, uh, so any new buildings would, would meet setbacks. Uh, the uh, Planning Commission did review this request, did recommend approval. Staff would also recommend approval. 
questions for Kevin on this? Tim or Mark, anything you'd like to add? Well, certainly this Old National Highway supports C2 development. Uh, it's consistent with uh, existing C2. Um, and as you get closer to the intersection uh, with uh, uh, Enon Springs, I would anticipate that we'll, con we'll continue to see the C2 development. Certainly, we're seeing it on the other side of Old Nashville Highway where you know we've cut across <laughs> with uh, Rocky Fork Indian Springs as far as C2. Great. Anything else? Seeing nothing else, do I have a motion? I move we approve. A motion, do we have a second? Second. second. Motion is second. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passes. Item two, consideration of an ordinance relative to the rezoning of property located on tax map 33, parcel 60.00, to go from R1 to R3. It's requested by Michael Daniel. The property requested to be rezoned contains 7.5 acres and is located at the end of Skinner Drive, west of Patience Drive. Now this is uh, a piece of property. It's uh, surrounded by, or land use plan would support a mix of uh, medium or medium density single family residential development and the surrounding zoning is R3 and then a couple of different PRDs which is the colony of green tree which is to the west which is uh, currently uh, has, has been approved for several years but has never developed and then uh, Burnett Ridge which is a more recently approved PRD to the south um, this is at the end of Skinner Drive that is the only road that is connected to this property um, the Planning Commission did review this did recommend approval uh, staff would also recommend approval. Questions for Kevin on this? Mark or Tim, anything? Seeing nothing, then do I have a motion? Motion to approve. Do we have a second? Second. Motion and a second. Any discussion? All in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion passes. Move on to item three under new business, which is consideration of an ordinance relative to the rezoning of property located on tax map 50, parcel 14.00, to go from C2 to I2. It's requested by Rashish Shaw. The property requested to be rezoned contains 9.88 acres and is located at Tridon Drive and Safari Drive. Kevin? Yeah, this is a piece of property. It's at the corner of Tridon and Safari uh, Drives there. Uh, land use plan is this area is a 24 gateway which would support a mix of uses and services kind of local and regional uh, in scale hospitality retail restaurant and multifamily uses are particularly appropriate for this area surrounding zoning is a mix of c2 and i2 in town and light industrial in rutherford county uh, a portion of this property does lie within the floodway as well as the 100 year floodplain it does uh, border stewart creek uh, so development will be uh, will require compliance with article 9 of the zoning ordinance uh, the Planning Commission did review this request, did recommend approval unanimously. Uh, staff would also recommend approval. They did submit a uh, concept plan, uh, which is in your packet and is on the, on the map shown on the screen there. Uh, that is purely conceptual in nature. Uh, it, it, it's, it's not a, a PUD type of application, it's just an I-2 application. But that is looking at, that is something for the building that they're looking at doing. I will point out at the Planning Commission, we did talk about potentially uh, flipping the, the parking, the, all the truck docks are on the side facing Lee Victory Parkway. We did talk about that as a potential thing that we could look at when the site plan, if this is approved, the site plan of review so that the truck docks would be facing Safari Drive and not Lee Victory Parkway. Uh, but again, this is, that is really just a concept plan at this point. We would look at that as a site plan of review. I heard you bring that up. Yeah. I thought that was a great idea. Well, it, it faces a major arterial for us. And if you look on your maps, the truck docks on the adjacent building would now back up to these on the same side. So rather than move all the truck docks to be visibil visibility from Tridon and Lee Victory, we thought it made more sense just to flip it and have all the truck docks facing one another. And so if you yeah, can make the engineer, it work. The engineer is very amenable. Yeah, they that. sound like they'd be great. For Kevin, uh, um, not directly related to this particular development, but that that portion of Tridon Road there, I think they're working on a bridge right now. It's half closed or whatever, but 
that kind of routes you out to the Amable Road interchange or intersection there. Um, at some point, as this I-2 area continues to develop, I think we're going to have to do something with that Tridon Road um, to be able to get traffic in and out of there. Um, specifically, like now, they had the bridge closed, and you you can't hardly get in out of there right now. So yeah. it's a two-lane road with virtually no shoulders and uh, pretty tight, even though it's only you know a thousand feet or so. So it, at what point does traffic study impact that kind of thing figure in? Well, of course, this development would require a traffic study most likely. Uh, any development on this property, uh, we had a traffic study that was done by the. Uh, I remember the company name was building, but the, on the end of Tridon there, <laughs> the three large industrial buildings are getting uh, under construction currently. And I know that Charles take up, took all that into consideration when they were designing the, the Tridon bridge improvements. And so uh, I think the bridge, part of that, the bridge improvements will make it easier to make for trucks to make the right turn and all of that, certainly. Um, as far as, I mean, I think we just had to look at what, there's a, think there's one tract on the other side to try it on and I think that'll almost kind of develop that area yeah. out it looks uh, like even on this map something at the end of safari there which is technically in the county is that's in the county that there's a church under construction on that yeah, property that's, that's a church yes okay yes that's where River Life Church is relocated to <coughs> so this this will be a warehouse trucking type thing it's a warehouse it's it's a they're a company that is a, uh, they have, they sell countertops and flooring, flooring and things like that. And, and there are, this will be kind of a warehouse primarily where they store and distribute from into the middle Tennessee area. There'll be if trucks they, will be coming in and then basically going out. So no, no retail here or is there retail? They, 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 they are going to have a small kind of a, a showroom type deal. They said more for contractor. More for contractors, not necessarily to directly to the public. No, it's more for contractors and that sort of thing. They would have a, to report their products, but it, large, the largest part of this building is a will be a where it would be a warehouse that would then be. Did uh, they tell you about how many? I assume it's semi trucks going in and out. Is that correct? Yes. Any idea be. how much? Uh, I, they didn't say we, we don't have a traffic study yet. I think there's 20 or so docks on the back. Oh, this and I know in my previous state. life we dealt in a lot of big trucks and that kind of traffic it just seemed to at least in the areas where they were it just seemed to uh, well we had a lot of um, road that had to be built and re, um, replaced uh, and it just it turned into something not not very nice as far as the way it looked I don't know this may be maybe kept a lot bit a lot better but uh, yeah. Just a lot of truck traffic in and out, uh, at least where I have seen in the past, is uh, yeah, yeah, wasn't I, the best thing. But. I don't think, I think it is, it, at least, of course, this is just an I-2 zoning, so it, it could be some, end up being something different. Uh, but uh, so that's the, what they're looking at doing. It would be just for the one company, it would, it would not be... It's not as a warehouse and distribution facility entirely, and that's all they're doing there. It's it's really more just for their, that company. And okay. again, there there have facilities all over the country, and I think this is this is they're establishing one for the Middle Tennessee area, where they could have their products come to a, a central location, and then distribute it out to contractors and job sites from there. Um, so I think the it wouldn't be as big of an impact as some. Or similar type uses would be mm -hmm. similar type buildings might be. It's about 128,000 square feet, I think, is the size of the building they're looking at there. But with all the development that's going back on behind that, we're going to see significant truck sure, traffic going sure. back through there. There's with with the three large buildings that are currently under construction at the back, will probably have a bigger impact than this would have for yeah. sure. Did you say something about a traffic study related to this? They would. There, there's not been one yet, but no, it would be. But this is just an I-2 zoning at this point. This is, like I said, this was a concept plan that they submitted just for their, our, for information. Mm -hmm. There's nothing tying the de a development to that plan. Okay. But a, a traffic study would be required as a part of their site plan re review if okay. you all choose to approve it. So it we don't have to address that right now. We do not have that now. would in the no. site plan meeting about right. the traffic study. Correct. Okay. 
Other questions? Do we have a motion? I move to approve. Do we have a second? Second. Motion and a second. Any discussion? All in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Aye. We'll move on to item four, which is consideration of a resolution authorizing the acquisition of easements by negotiation or condemnation for the purposes of carrying out the basins A and A3 sewer project. Yes, this is the uh, recommendation from Planning Commission. This is regarding the, the uh, issue or item that was on your consent agenda earlier uh, with regards to the, the hiring of the, the appraisers and, the, and everything. Uh, this would be uh, the town is, is preparing to repair and upsize the existing 24 inch gravity sewer line along Hart's Branch from Sam Davis Road to Highland Avenue. This will require the acquisition of 37 permanent and 37 temporary easements. I did attach the maps that show that area as well as the table which detail the various properties where easements would be acquired. Uh, the Planning Commission did review this and found it consistent with the comprehensive plan of the town and did recommend approval and staff would re also recommend approval. Questions for Kevin on this? We're going to move this to a 36 inch or a 48 inch. I'll have to defer to Mr. Train on that. I believe it'll be in the section. Part of it will be a 36 and then some of it is going from 12 to 18. This um, it completes the rest of the basin, so the line going, which is the trunk line A that goes directly to the plant down mm -hmm. Rock Springs, right. that is going to be upsized. It's 18 part of the way now, 24, and that will be 36 and then 24. Gotcha. Flipped. Gotcha. Gotcha. Other questions? Do we have a motion? Move to approve. Do we have a second? Second. Motion and a second. Any discussion? All in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion passes. Item B is package liquor board report. There were no applications for the town to consider at this time. So we'll move on to item C, which is consideration of a resolution approving funding for nonprofit organizations for fiscal year 23-24. Hey, Rex. Hey, Mayor. Council, uh, a resolution stating the agency purpose and amount must be approved before any funds can be distributed to nonprofit agencies according to guidelines established by the Comptroller of the Treasury and the State of Tennessee. We recommend you approve this resolution. Questions on our nonprofits? I do have one question mm -hmm. on, I didn't recognize this one, uh, the Transit Alliance of Middle Tennessee. What is that? On the what? Transit Alliance of Middle Tennessee. That's a a uh, group that studies transportation in Middle Tennessee. Okay. It's a nonprofit. And so do they just study, like they give us a report or something every year or something? Uh, I attended a class, uh, several classes. Todd went through it. Brian's went through it. It's it, almost like Leadership Rutherford. It's uh -huh. about transit, transit. and okay. looking at transit in the whole region okay. and trying to come up with ideas and um, ways to improve transit. Okay. I wasn't sure if it was related to, like, the buses or what it was. No, so. it's not like okay. RTA. Okay. So. Other questions? Do we have a motion? Move to approve. Do we have a second? Second. Motion and second. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? motion passes. We'll now move on to item D, which is consideration of an ordinance amending the fee schedule for the 23-24 fiscal year budget for the adoption of a new maximum maximum impact fee rate. Kevin. Yes, Mayor and Council, we had discussed this at the workshop and um, we did separate it out because it really is two separate items. There's a, a amendment to the, the fee schedule is one thing and then there's some um, amendments to the municipal code as well for uh, sec uh, section five, uh, title five, text section five. Um, so this first item is for just the, uh, the budget uh, fee schedule uh, amendment. Now uh, these fees were originally adopted in December of 1999. We've pre periodically studied these fees and updated the maximum rates. Um, we did contract with Duncan Associates to perform this study and the update. Um, these rates are uh, significantly higher in most cases, uh, though the rates for warehousing did go down a bit. 
the increases are largely due to the increases in the cost of capital improvements since the last update. Uh, warehousing is proposed to decrease uh, largely due to re revisions in the uh, ITE trip generation manual, um, which uh, show that there's the number of trips actually generated by that type of use have gone down, largely due to the fact that the typical number of people working at these facilities have, have gone down. Uh, so that does lower the fee for roads and public safety for that type of use. Um, again, we did discuss at the uh, workshop that making this effective October 1st, and so I think that's certainly something that could be added to your motion. But uh, staff would recommend approval. Questions for Kevin on this? Do we have a motion? Move it. With it taking effect October 1? Yeah. Okay. We have a motion, and do we have a second? Second. Motion and second. Any discussion? All in favor say aye. aye. Any opposed? Motion passes. Moving on to item E, which is consideration of an ordinance amending the town's municipal code, Title V, Municipal Finance and Taxation, Section 5, Impact Fees. Yeah, these are the, the ordinance amendments. Um, these are uh, relatively minor, and they're largely some cleanup amendments. There are a couple of things I do want to point out that are a little more significant. Uh, one would state uh, specifically that structures used for parking uh, are exempt from the fees, as that use doesn't generate traffic any more than the parking lot does. Um, and then the second one would just change the net cost per vehicle mile traveled uh, to reflect the updated cost from the study. And so those uh, comments uh, staff would recommend approval. Questions for Kevin? So the parking lot, if it's just a parking garage, there's no fees associated with it, but if it's connected to a building, it is? If, if you had a building where it were to be built that had a parking garage element, but they, the parking garage square footage would not pay not the fee, count. but say they had a, a, a commercial business that was attached to it or something like that, they would pay fees for that portion of it. Okay. Other questions? Do I have a motion? I'll move we approve. Motion. Do we have a second? Second. Motion and a second. Any discussion? All in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion passes. Anything under other tonight? No, ma'am. Rexy Taxi. Status reports on sales tax. Yes, ma'am. May state shared tax, we received $726,153. May local sales tax, we received $1,675,000. $329, and I'm happy to report that sales tax are still coming in above budget. HG's doing his job, isn't he? <laughs> okay. Questions for Rex on this? I know we laugh and joke about it each month about shopping local, but I can't tell you how much this council appreciates what our citizens do in trying to keep business here within the city limits of the town of Smyrna because it sure helps all of us. Well, it keeps our property tax lower. We're an unusual community and that we, our top revenue is sales tax, not property tax. I bet there's very few communities that that's the case. So, okay, thanks Rex. Director's department heads, any announcements from you all tonight? Amber. No, ma'am. I don't know if y'all noticed, Todd's in the chair tonight. <laughs> Todd's got to get out of here. He's, He's got to go, go buy his Oh, wife I know. I saw this. Yep. Oh. Tonight's a special night. Absolutely. What's your announcement, Todd? Happy birthday to my lovely wife. <laughs> I'll lead off with that one. But yes, we did get a present. We already gave her the present, so thank you. But we want to see proof. New car. At the next meeting, you have to bring a picture of the gift. Well, I'm, sh I'm sure that there will be a picture sent here just in a minute. Oh, good. Okay. Uh, okay. From we that. just want to make sure. I'd like to lead off tonight with our um, thoughts and prayers for Mike Moss, our director of parks. Um, his wife, Haley, lost uh, her stepfather, uh, Les Clemens. Uh, interesting story is he would wake the kids up at night to uh, take them to Krispy Kreme because the hot sign was on. It's a man after my own heart that would do that. So, uh, Mike, we keep your family. There are thoughts and prayers. 
Um, we also have uh, one of the community to join us on Friday, July 14th at the Smyrna Outdoor Adventure Center for Middle Tennessee Electric Night at the SOAC. Uh, there will be a fiber splice demonstration provided by United Communications, which if you've never seen it, it's kind of interesting. They're splicing uh, fibers that are about as thin as your hair, and it's interesting to watch how they do that. Plus, the most important part for me is Kona Ice will be there. Um, uh, come out and join the fun. Um, Don't, please tell me that's not what you're giving Beverly for her birthday. Kona Ice and splicing them. In addition them. to, right? But Kona Ice is very good. <laughs> it is very, very good. I'll give you the birthday cake flavor. Um, uh, mark your calendars for July 22nd. Paddle Adventures will be renting paddle craft at, uh, at the water. Come out to uh, Jefferson Springs for a chance to rent kayaks and canoes from the SOAC staff. Uh, the rates, rentals will be hourly. Again, the location is Jefferson Springs Rec Area from 11 to 5. Walk-ups are welcome. Um, it's for ages 5 and up. Anybody under the age of 18 must be accompanied by an adult. Any other information, you can contact our SOAC or email mikecraft at townofsmyrna.org. Um, next, one of the events that I like the most is the United Way Golf Scramble. The town is hosting the 11th annual Smyrna Golf Scramble on Friday, August 11th at the Smyrna Golf Course. Sponsorship packets are available now through July 14th. Jeff Craig, July 14th is response. Okay. Um, sign up today. You, you can't lose with this hole-in-one event. Uh, if you have more information, want more information, or you want to sponsor, you can contact Jeff at jeff.craig at townofsmyrna.org. Mayor's already talked to Tim about some personal liability insurance. <laughs> <laughs> it's like the air show. When I get on the tee, they have to block off the box to, yeah. to reduce. Can, reduce I can go on vacation. <laughs> reduce the insurance. insurance. <laughs> so I have one slide that's a little out of place. It's uh, congratulations to Trish Strickland Brothers, uh, the 10-minute oil change on their grand opening and second location in Smyrna. And then I'll end with uh, one that's uh, very prevalent in our town today. It's uh, love where you live. Nobody trashes Tennessee. Um, and I agree wholeheartedly with Mr. Hercules on this. Uh, when you have trash in your vehicle, there's plenty of receptacles, plenty of locations to dispose of that trash. Don't throw it out the window. Just this week, we uh, contacted uh, Chief Irvin. Uh, somebody had decided to dump some trash bags on the side of the road, and he sent his officers out there to do a little investigation, see if we can locate uh, who threw the trash. But uh, love where you live. That's all I have, Mayor. Jeffrey L. Nothing for me, Mayor. Rockhill. Um, condolences to Mike Moss and his wife. Um, and I have one that does not. Oh, it did have a slide. It's working. Okay. It. okay. <laughs> all right. So the Smyrna Police Department, the Smyrna Fire Department, and also not shown, the Smyrna Parks and Rec Department were recently honored with an appreciation award presented by myself to Smyrna Chief of Police Jason Irving, Smyrna Fire Chief Bill Culbertson, and Director Mike Moss on behalf of their department's contributions to the Juneteenth event. So again, thank you all for all you did to make that event a success. That's all I have today. Uh, Mike, I'll add my condolences to your family. I, I know uh, we've recently gone through a family loss uh, as well, so I know what you guys are going through. Um, I'll just take it for, for HG tonight, uh, shop local, and be kind. Jerry? Uh, Mike as well. I'm sure I'm sorry for your loss. Um, uh, just uh, kind of want to let everybody know that our sister city committee will be sending a group to Japan uh, leaving this uh, Saturday. There'll be four students and uh, two chaperones, and they'll be going to Zama and, and representing our town. So uh, uh, we appreciate what they're doing, and I know they're excited about going. They're actually meeting in there right now, and when this is over, I'm going to go meet with them. But I uh, uh, just wanted to let everybody know that uh, they're, uh, they're on their way to Japan. So uh, the, uh, Also, um, on Thursday will be mine and Patty's 38th anniversary, so happy anniversary. So. Are you going to get her a gift? She's got me. Like I said, are you going to get her a gift? <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm going to take her to Applebee's. Oh, okay, good, good. Oh. Okay, thank you. 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 know she's probably watching, right? <laughs> <laughs> I don't even know how to follow that. <laughs> 
<laughs> my condolences. Um, I think all of us, especially around our age, are starting to have um, more and more close family members we're having to help, and the loss of one is always tough, so condolences. Um, I, I don't have anything other than I want to, in honor of HG, who couldn't be here tonight, be kind and shop local. Um, condolences, Mike and Haley, about your loss, uh, especially, I know that's Haley's side of the family, and she's probably uh, missing her dad pretty, pretty big, so. Um, some other people that passed away recently in our community, Margaret Utley, I don't know if any of you knew Margaret, uh, I think I was 13 or 14 when I met her, and she was uh, a pianist over at Stones River Baptist Church when I was a child. I grew up on the same street with her for a lot of years after Connie and I got married, same thing. So uh, Miss Utley was 99 years old, 99, and passed away this week. A friend of mine, Tim Wilson, Tim's from Murfreesboro, he's a realtor friend of mine and served as the uh, president of our Board of Realtors for a period of time, and Tim was 63 and, and uh, pretty young, and uh, happened pretty quickly. So to condolences to Tim Wilson and his family. Um, the prayer was said a while ago for Bobby Wells, and we want to continue to give our condolences there. Um, on a good note, my little grandson Noah turned five years old this week, and we partied hard with him last Saturday, so I think we're going to party hard again this Saturday with him. He has double birthdays for some reason. But, and just uh, thank you all for the July 4th celebration, uh, all the teams that pitched in, Chief, Chief, all your guys, uh, Parks and Rec, all the employees that pitched in to make that success during the storm. We had the storm, and we had to lose some of our music and a few vendors and things like that, but pulled it off without a hitch, and, and uh, it was great to get out there and celebrate our independence and our freedom. So um, that's all I've got. Great. A couple of items. You were speaking about our Independence Day celebration, and the rain didn't dampen that celebration. We were a little concerned about it. We were able to enjoy our food vendors, our music, fun, and fireworks. I can't tell you how many hours our staff puts in to make that event possible, as well as volunteers and um, those that come to set up booths. So thanks to everybody who made it a great night. And I will have to say, other than a little bit of damp grass, it was the perfect night weather-wise. We were so lucky. and. I have heard more than once that it was the best fireworks show yet, so it was good. Um, sign up for Smyrna Youth Football and Cheer. Registration is available through July the 22nd at SmyrnaYouthFootball.org, so don't forget to sign up for that. Um, the Top Gun Night Run is Friday, September the 15th. You can sign up and join us for this family-friendly event benefiting the Coos Memorial. Um, because city funds don't go to the upkeep of the memorial. That is all taken care of through our coach run, for, through our fun run. So um, I will tell you it is very much family friendly. If you're a serious runner, you'll enjoy it. But if you're not a serious runner, you'll also enjoy it as well. Just come out and have a good time. We've got a lot of new things this year that we're excited about. Join us um, on Thursday, July the 13th from 4 to 6.30 at the Smyrna Outdoor Adventure Center to celebrate the 100th home, lift, home uplift milestone with Middle Tennessee Electric and the TVA Energy. There'll be free food and fun for the whole family. Mark your calendars for Saturday, August the 12th for our annual Depot District Barbecue Festival. You can join us for food, live music, and family fun. Ooh, Mike Moss, this is just for you. World Snake Day is approaching. Are you going to be handling that? <laughs> you and Daddy both can attend that. Um, it's approaching, and we would love you to join us for the Smyrna Outdoor Adventure Center on Saturday, July the 15th, to celebrate. SOAC staff will be hosting this event from 11 to 1. Guests can join us for a chance to meet our snakes and learn more about them while also enjoying themed crafts and activities. The event is free with paid admission. All ages are welcome. We encourage you to register through Community Pass. So um, come out and enjoy that day. Um, 
MTSU Athletics is hitting the road in July for their annual Blue Raider Blitz. The 2023 summer caravan will stop in Smyrna tomorrow at the event center from 1130 to 1, where Blue Raider fans will have a chance to hear from head coach Rick Stockstill and other MTSU head coaches on their upcoming season and also learn about um, everything MTSU has going on in um, athletics. You will... Uh, if you sign up to go, you'll also get to have lunch at the event center. So there are still uh, seats available. You'll also have the opportunity to win promotional prizes, including ticket packages, Blue Raider gear, and much more. You can visit our Facebook page for the link to sign up for tomorrow from 1130 to 1 to come out and hear about MTSU. Uh, we were pleased to attend the I-24 Smart Corridor System launch in Rutherford County. Um, speakers there were Commissioner of Transportation Butch Ely, Senator Becky Massey, Representative Tim Rudd, myself, Mayor Shane McFarland, uh, Laverne Mayor Jason Cole, and um, Brian and Todd and Tom Rose, and quite a few of the crew were all out there. So um, if you've not noticed, uh, the things on I-24 with the signs in regards to speed and letting you know whether there's a crash up ahead. Also letting you know if you need to detour off of 24 onto some of the uh, other routes to head you to Murfreesboro Road to then get back on. Those are what those are for. And it is not going to be something that is going to happen overnight. I mean, I keep seeing people posting on that wonderful Facebook that why did we do this? So um, just know it is a small part of what TDOT is looking at in regards to traffic congestion. We're thrilled to announce that Smyrna has been selected as the only city in Tennessee to receive Fortune Magazine's um, 50 Best Places to Live for Families in 2023. Um, it is a huge honor that we are so excited about. I will tell you this team at the town of Smyrna works really, really hard to give us all the best quality of life we can have here. And it is so nice to be recognized. And this is one of quite a few announcements that we'll be making in um, the upcoming months. But we feel very honored to be recognized and especially to be recognized as um, the only one in the state of Tennessee. So congratulations to our team for all of your hard work and also to our citizens. We appreciate each one of you and we hope you consider it the best place to live in the country. Um, another award, Tennessee, uh, Smyrna receives the Municipal League Award of Excellence for Governance. As the community continues to experience rapid economic growth, leadership in the town of Smyrna continues to strive for efficient and effective government practices that enhance the quality of life, improve municipal service delivery, and leverage economic assets. In recognition of these efforts made by Smyrna officials to continuously assess local needs and assess while working together with citizens to create positive solutions and outcomes, the Tennessee Municipal League was pleased to honor Smyrna with an award for excellence in governance. And our award will be presented on Tuesday, July the 25th at the conference. So kudos to staff and this team for what you do to make sure that our town runs efficiently. We appreciate that. I know we as a council work really hard to make sure that we are spending your money very efficiently and um, effectively. So um, I also want to say congratulations to Deborah Walker on her retirement. How long was she here, Mike? 27 years. 27 years. So um, hate to see Deborah go, but I am so glad that um, she is getting her time with retirement. So congratulations to Deborah. Council, is there anything else? Good job tonight, Todd. Thank yes, sure. I did get proof. I did get confirmation, unless it was just a stock photo of a gift in a gift bag. So I did get a gift bag, but I did not see the item that was inside the gift bag. So wait till I get home. It's wait till you get home. That's probably good. Let's get a little personal. Yeah. Could be. Okay. If nothing else, then we are adjourned. Hey, Mark.